Maserati is a brand with a rich history, a CV littered with cars that are so beautiful, they stop your day and captivate your heart. The 3500 GT, the Bora, A6 GCS Berlinetta, and let's not forget the Ferrari Enzo's twin cousin, the MC12. But the thing is, we did forget. We forgot what Maserati could do as a brand, and that's because for the last two decades, they haven't really given us all that much to talk about. Except now they have a new design signature, a new ethos, and most exciting for me, a new supercar. They call it the MC20, and all performance for later, this is the most beautiful supercar I've seen in years. It isn't over-designed, there are no harsh lines or exaggerated calls for attention. It's the closest thing to a piano solo in the automotive world. Part of being a supercar is being very striking to look at, and I think that the MC20 does that very well. It's sort of the perfect combination of the new Lotus Amira and the Alpine A110, which is a French sports car that unfortunately we don't get here in the States. I especially love the silhouette of this car. It's very, very striking to look at, but me standing here and drooling over the MC20 doesn't make for all that good of a video, so instead, I'll talk you through it. Now, what you need to understand about this car is that it is Italian through and through. So it was designed in the Maserati Innovation Lab, which is in Italy, and it was entirely built in a historic facility in Modena, Italy. Now, this was done to kickstart Maserati's new lineup of cars, and it makes sense that they would start with a supercar. They're going back to their roots of designing and building properly good luxury performance cars. The exterior was designed with a special emphasis on aesthetics. The designers wanted to, quote, conceive the car almost as a dynamic sculpture. And the result was a bit of a split personality. The first personality drinks espresso, knows how to wear a scarf, and sits at an unnamed cafe reading a newspaper while wearing loafers with no socks. They're concerned primarily with beauty, and they're in control of the upper half of the design for the MC20. So the primary focus is looking very good, but of course this being a performance car needs to incorporate some level of aerodynamics. So where compromises must be made, those aerodynamic components are integrated into the stunning bodywork in such a way that they're overshadowed by the pleasing looks. The second personality wears a lab coat, doesn't need a calculator, and has shoes with laces that are tied in such a way that the ends are exactly the same distance away from the knot. They're impeccably precise, and they're in charge of the lower half, a much more technical approach with plenty of vents, channels, and arcs to manage the air flowing over, around, and under the car. The MC20 spent over 2,000 man hours in a wind tunnel to fine tune the bodywork to make sure that both personalities were satisfied, all while holistically meeting the demands of a performance car of this magnitude. Interestingly, 97% of this car was designed in a virtual complex mathematical model, a system developed by Maserati so that they could manipulate a bunch of different parameters. The result was that over the course of developing and building this car, it was put through over a thousand simulations. The innovation doesn't end at the exterior. It has a monocoque carbon fiber chassis to save weight and offer more flexibility in the design to create shapes you simply can't with press formed metal. Double wishbone suspension with active dampers are present for both the front and the rear. And then there's the engine. They call it the Natuno engine for the God of the sea. And it's a three liter twin turbocharged V6 that makes 621 brake horsepower and 538 pound-feet of torque. What makes it special is that they've employed Formula One technology in the form of a pre-chamber combustion system. Now, the benefits of that system are multifold. First off, the combustion is more efficient, which means that your emissions are better, and that's very important even in the world of supercars. Also, because of that system, you can have a 25% smaller displacement while producing the same amount of power, which in turn will save you a bit of weight. Now, this car will rev all the way up to 8,000 RPM, but my favorite thing about that new pre-chamber system is that it means that you can push this engine much harder. This, in conjunction with the 8-speed double-clutch automatic transmission and rear-wheel drive, means that the MC20 can do 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds and on to a top speed of 202 miles per hour. 
The interior of this car is minimalist and that's done intentionally because Maserati doesn't want to distract you from the pleasures of driving the MC20. And by doing so, they've created an appeal very similar to that of a main course dish at a fancy restaurant. There might not be very much on the plate, but you can't help but appreciate the time, effort, the passion that went into every single element. Elements like these paddle shifters, which seem to be milled out of a single piece of aluminium. They're very nice to the touch. The mode selection dial is modeled after a luxury watch. And I'm a big lover of watches, so I appreciate that very much. You have some knurling on the edges for all of the dials, actually, for the interior, which make them very pleasant to the touch as well. You have a very small infotainment screen, which isn't distracting, but is very functional. All of the colors on the interior are darker, and that's done intentionally to minimize the reflections on the windshield so that it's less distracting. Even on the seatbelt buckle, you have a little Maserati emblem, which is a very nice detail. You've got Maserati embossed into the footrest in the passenger side, as well as onto the brake pedal. Now, this steering wheel feels lovely. You have Alcantara on the sides, carbon fiber everywhere else. And it was designed in partnership with Andre Beltorini, who was the FIA GT1 class world champion in a Maserati MC12. The cost for all of this is a modest $230,000. And I don't use the word modest sarcastically because I really can't think of a car that's made in the same way as this MC20. It's kind of like a one-off, those multi-million dollar cars that are commissioned by multi-billionaires because why not? I have nothing but positive things to say about it and it's not because it's a perfect car because it definitely isn't. It has a couple of features that kind of boggle the mind. The frunk space, for example, is only big enough for a pencil that's sharpened to half length. And on the interior, the center console has what looks like a phone pad but isn't big enough to hold a phone why I'm not quite sure. But I have only positive things to say because I appreciate the way that this car is made. And now what I'm hoping is that I'll appreciate the way that it drives. Straight away, the sounds that you experience when you're in this car are magnificent. The visceral audio quality of the turbos spooling up is unlike anything I've seen in any other modern car, it's very old fashioned. In fact, the way this entire car drives is quite old fashioned, which is a good thing because that means that you're really focusing on the driving sensations in the car, where in modern cars, obviously this is still modern, in other modern cars, you have so many different driver assistants and dampening and systems integrated into the cars to numb the experience as much as possible to make it comfortable. But Maserati's not trying to do that with this car. Go ahead and switch the car into sport mode. That's gonna dial up the throttle response. The turbos are going to spool better. The exhaust is going to open up and those adaptive suspension dampers are going to stiffen just to give you a bit more of a sporty feel for lack of a better word. The thing that I really love about this car is why it was made, how it was made. As I said just moments ago in the video, a lot of other brands are obsessed with numbers. They want to release cars with the most horsepower, with the most torque, with the highest price tag. And what happens when you do that, I'm just going to turn the AC down a tiny bit, is you dilute the purity of the supercar because you're no longer concerned with strictly making a car that makes the driver smile and giggle and feel like a child and you're really just in competition with each other to create the highest number. There are brands that don't do this. Brands like Pagani, brands like Aston Martin with their Victor. Both of those cars, both of those brands, they make cars that are very, very expensive. So in that numbers sense, they're obviously numbers oriented, they're multi-million dollar cars, but the purpose of the car is to provide something special, to invoke emotion in the driver, in the buyer, in the people that see it. It's not about building the fastest car. There are faster cars than the Aston Martin Victor, faster cars than a Pagani Huayra, but cars that are made with the intent of those, I can't think of too many, and I think the Maserati MC20 is one of them. It doesn't feel like a car that's chasing 
a technical objective. It feels like the designers wanted to create a car that they were passionate about, a car that they love for people that love cars. And I can't think of a better reason to own a car. I think it's a piece of art and a very exciting way for Maserati to re-enter into the supercar market. Finally, the car cave credits. This is my way of summarizing my final thoughts on a car in four different categories. For collectability, I would give a score of 6 out of 10. It isn't a limited edition car, but I don't see too many cars like it being made in the future as we continue towards a sense-numbing electrification. For daily drivability, I would give it a 3 out of 10. There is no space for anything, the brake pedal can be a bit tiresome after a long drive, and those doors, while beautiful, would make me cringe a bit in tight parking places. For track worthiness, I would give it a 6 out of 10. There are no Nürburgring times, so I'm basing this on the Top Gear lap times, which put it somewhere in the middle of the supercar group. For coolness factor, this is obviously subjective, but I would give it a score of 8 out of 10. It is unique, it looks stunning, and gives some very old-school supercar feels. It also helps that it was made by people that love cars, and what's cooler than that? This gives the Maserati MC20 a total of 23 car cave credits. That's all I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. And a huge thank you to Maserati of Newport Beach for letting me shoot this stunning example of the MC20. So I will leave the regular links in the description below, as well as the posting to this actual car, which they currently have available for sale. Otherwise, leave me a comment with your thoughts on the MC20, or maybe some suggestions for cars or videos that you'd like to see in the future. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to show your support for the channel and so that you don't miss another post. But until the next video, thanks again and take care.